Hello and thank you for joining. This is our update from the 16th of December. We recommend that you try to visit the course at least once every week or two, because it is likely you will find new lessons, exercises, or materials. Having said that, let's start with the core part of this lesson, solving the exercise that was uploaded in Course Materials. This exercise is dedicated to the application of the SUMIFS function. In the first part of the course, we saw how SUMIFS work, and now it is time to see how it is applied in practice. Let's open the exercise file. In its first sheet, we find the instructions, which are quite simple. The database sheet contains data for transactions carried out in a chain of supermarkets. We have to use this information in order to fill in the two tables that are in the Exercise 1 and Exercise 2 sheets with an annual breakdown of revenues. The information in Database is organized in a table format and consists of more than 15,000 rows. This does not scare us, right? We know how to deal with large quantities of data. Let's insert a filter, as it is much easier to work once we have done that. I'll use the Alt plus A plus T shortcut in order to carry out the command faster. It is always a good idea to spend an extra minute looking through the material in order to get a better understanding of the data source. Let's go through the source table and describe the type of information that it contains. The first column shows the financial period in which the transactions in each row occurred. The database contains transactions from four periods, 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. In column C, we can see the type of the store in which the transactions were carried out. There are three types of stores, convenience stores, hypermarkets, and supermarkets. The next column contains a product group classification, meat, coffee, alcohol, etc. Column E provides information about the producer of the products, while column F contains an internal code used by the accounting department of the firm in order to classify all items. We are not going to use it in this exercise. In the last four columns, we have data about the number of units that were sold, the unitary cost of the items, the unitary price at which they were sold, and the amount of revenue that was registered given by the product of volume and unitary selling price. The only figures that we will need for this exercise are the ones in the last column, revenues. Now that we've done our initial screening, we can go ahead and solve the exercises. In exercise one, we have to fill in a table with the amount of revenues that each of these product groups had throughout the four financial periods. Some if would not be sufficient for this task. We need to work with multiple conditions, hence some ifs comes into play. Above each of the financial periods, let's type the format that was used in our database. By doing this, we will be able to use these cells as criteria in the some ifs function. We have 2011, 2012, 2013, and six months of 2014. The first argument of some ifs is the sum range. That will be column J in the source sheet, revenues. Let's select the whole column J and fix it. Then we have to pick the range of our first criteria. Given that we have to find revenues of each product group, I suggest that we select the column containing product groups, column D. I am fixing column D as well. Back to our output table. The product group criterion lies in B5. Let's fix its column reference. Good. This was our first criterion. Now we have to include a second one. The range for our second condition is column B in the database sheet, where we have the year in which a given transaction occurred. Then we can go back to the exercise one sheet and select C3 as a criterion which is the respective financial period. Let's fix the row reference of this cell. I am doing this because later, when we copy the function downwards, we want our criterion to remain in the third row. We will not fix the column reference because we want the criterion to be updated when we paste the function to the right. For example, 
2011 will be updated with 2012 if we copy one cell to the right. The sum ifs function is ready. We can paste it for the whole table by using paste special formulas. Sum ifs calculates the amount of revenues that a specific product group had in a given period of time. Moreover, because we fixed criteria references properly, we are able to fill in the whole table by typing the function only once. Good. Let's move on to the second exercise. Here, things get a bit trickier. We have an additional degree of breakdown, as we need to take into account the store type as well. It is not difficult to carry out this task. The only thing that we need to do is to include an additional element in the sum ifs function. We will have the same thing as before, plus an additional condition, store type. Above each of the columns, I will type the financial period that it refers to. We can easily use these cells as criteria of the sum ifs function. Let's type sum ifs and select as a first argument the column J in the database sheet containing the amount of revenues. We have to fix its reference because later we will copy the function to the right. Then we want to insert the conditions that have to be respected. The first two conditions are identical to the ones we had in exercise one. By introducing the two conditions related to the product group and the financial period, some ifs will add only the rows that respect these conditions. In order for some ifs to sum the revenues in J, it has to verify that the year and product group conditions are satisfied. We need to include a third condition as well though, namely type of store. I'll select the column containing information about the type of store and pick C4 in our output sheet. By doing this, we're assuring that only revenues from meat products in convenience stores registered in 2011 are summed by our function. Please note that similarly to what we did for the financial period criterion, we will fix the row reference of the store type criterion as we would like to be able to maintain the fourth row as criterion when we paste the function downwards. Our sum ifs function with three conditions is ready. Let's paste the function in the entire table. As you can see, fixing references properly allowed us to type the formula only once and then copy it for all periods. Our output table is now ready. It provides three degrees of breakdown, product group, type of store, and financial period. This is how you can use some ifs in order to create sophisticated and dynamic formulas in Excel. The core focus of this exercise is twofold, understanding how to work with some ifs and practicing fixing cell references properly in order to be as efficient as possible. Stay tuned for our next updates.